So thank you very much for coming down. Uh, my name is Zach Noyle, and this is an extension of my uh, aquatography workshops here. And my aquatography workshops were to help and share the love of photography in the ocean. Um, and so tonight's edition is going to be on housings, uh, water housings, SPLs, obviously. We've got SPLs everywhere. And we actually have the owner, Sean, who's the creator, manufacturer here in the building. Came all the way from California to help us tonight. So if you have specific questions, needs, wants, rants, anything, <laughs> John, let me have. And then we got we got Josh it. here, and Josh owns Hawaii Camera. And this is a great. Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is a rental house. If you guys don't know, you need to know because this is the best place for everything and anything you could need: cameras, lenses, housings. Advice, anything, friendship, he rents it all. <laughs> he rents friendship out. So, yes. So, uh, thank you, Josh, for hosting us on tonight's event. Um, I wanted to just go over a few things with the housings tonight and um, a lot of the care because with these housings, they'll last a very long time, but if you don't take care of it, it'll be a very short time. Leak, flood your camera, anything like that. So we're gonna go over some general maintenance and care and items with the housing and the basics of the housing. So if you have questions, please raise your hand, ask whenever, and you guys can crowd around. We're just going to be like this. I hope that's okay. We're going to put chairs, and I thought this would be a little bit more fun with the housings out and everything around. So welcome. Next slide, please. Oh, and my dad is running the slide. The projector. <laughs> Give him a hand. So these are our splash housings. These are, um, you can click on to the next just click two, please. These are the Splash Series housings. One more. And it is, they're um, like a plastic, plastic injected mold. You want to talk a little bit about these ones and why? Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're vacuum formed um, polyurethane. Um, we came up with these housings because somebody likes red, somebody likes blue, somebody likes green, somebody likes yellow. So we basically came up with these because some people like front load housings and some people like rear load housing. These are a little bit easier for us to do multiple camera housing, multiple cameras inside one housing. So we also got a little benefit out of that. Um, and they work, sim they're very similar um, other than the port selection. There's a lot less ports available for these more for the simple shooters, you know, that aren't going to be into the 7200s or 24 to 105. Um, they're great housing. I use them whenever I can't find something else that I don't have. Um, I just grab one of those and I'll shoot with those and they work the same as an A series. Okay, next one, please. <clears throat> so these are A series. And you can click on please and it will drop in a series housings and the information <clears throat> so so on these ones Sean we want to talk a little bit? um a series are the first ones that we ever made they're aluminum thin really thin walled um, 050 or 50,000 thin um, aluminum they're sheared bent welded and then uh, anodized to keep the salt water corrosion down then they're powder coated with an industrial powder coat. Uh, powder coat is actually a powder that you spray on with an electrical charge and then you bake it in an oven. So it's hard as rock, you can dent the housing and the paint doesn't chip off. Um, they're our original series and they're our best series because of the port selection. You can get a port with just about any lens made on the planet. Just about. Um, they have any of the control, all the controls that you can get on the Splash series. You can put flashes on them, pocket wizards, uh, poles, um, pretty much anything that you want to do with your housing, we can do with an A-series. So I, I've slammed this on the back of the reef, or the back of my housings, I've slammed on the reef. Just dented the buttons and like dented the whole thing, but didn't break, you know, like as opposed to the other ones. So that's a little reassuring, you know, you don't want to crack the port or anything, but these do handle a beating. I've put these quite through the cases and handles. So, wow. We actually just had uh, we had a housing come back. Who was it? Morgan Masson's uh, 
red housing, and I don't know what he did to it, but he must have luggage or something, and he actually smashed the side of the housing in so that it was actually like a like a good quarter inch dent in the side of the housing, right on one of the controls. So basically, we just took the control out, put it on a on a hard piece of metal, and we just tapped it back out. So basically, fixed it like that, put the control back in, the control lined up perfect, sent it back to him, and he's using it today. We've had a few. Uh, um, Brent Bielman did the same thing. He smashed the back of his housing on, on the reef or something like that, just pushed in his control, leaked a little bit, just brought it back to the shop, tapped it out, put the new control gland back in it, and he's good to go. He's using it today. So the, the aluminum really takes a beating. Todd Glacier got his housing stuck in between a, the, uh, uh, a jet ski and a, a wharf that he was on. Smashed the, the back of back of his flash housing in a quarter inch deep. It was probably that deep. Just dented the whole back side of it in. He's like, yeah, I kept using it. It didn't leak, so I didn't ever send it back. So the aluminum really can you can beat the crap out of aluminum. It'll, it'll dent all day long. It'll bend, but it will not leak. It won't crack and it won't leak. So um, they're definitely by far our best and strongest series. The plastic is a lot thicker, so you can you can smash the plastic pretty good and. It's not going to crack and fall apart and leak on you. So just so you know, those who have flash housing, they're they're what about a depth they're built thing? pretty tough. So the depth, the depth rating. We in the beginning, we put the depth rating on there as a sales like a sales pitch. They will hold deeper. We we pump those things up to some pretty pretty great depth, and they they don't leak. But we don't we don't really make dive housing. So we that was just kind of like a sales pitch to, to get people to you know, to buy them, but we rate all our housing 15 to 20 because that's where everybody uses them. Everybody uses them in the big surf. The, the flash housing, I mean, the A-series housing will hold any depth that you're going to swim under when you're going under a wave. They'll, they'll handle the same thing. Um, so they're basically the same. They're just different. Okay. So this next slide is a little box, uh, it's just a taco box. This is, I'm just gonna show you a few things that I do. And so, you know, it comes in the Ziploc, and you get all your things, and I've seen some of my friends carry this around for months with all their stuff, losing things and doing things. So, I'm gonna go to the next one. And so I just, I'm kinda showing you a few little tricks and things that I do and what I carry and do. Um, obviously, you got the O-ring loop, some extra rubber bands for my um, gearing. Um, the screwdrivers, super glue, extra rubber pieces, everything. Wing nuts, ton of wing nuts. I actually hide wing nuts all over my bag. I probably lost a lot that way. But one day I'm going to need one and I'm going to find them and be like, oh yeah, it's in my bag. So they're all over my different bags and car and everything like that. For that one time, you're just missing one. You, and it can ruin your session otherwise. So. Put one or two, I put all over different places and it's helped a lot. So yeah. I did the same thing when I got here. I didn't have all the wing nuts for my, my 1DX housing. I tore apart my Pelican case, took all the foam out, and there was like three of them <laughs> underneath. I was like, thank God, thank God. <laughs> thank you. So this is just another shot looking at the things. And if you keep going on this, oops. Just kind of showing you what there is. There's also even Q-tips. And this is great for cleaning your O-ring from sand. Um, I don't know where I got this thing, and it's like the greatest thing for cleaning your O-ring because it's a little plastic thing and scoops all that sand out perfectly and cleans it, but I don't know. <laughs> Keep going. I don't know where you get it. I, it's probably my dad's, and I took it, to tell you the truth. Honestly. Yeah, go next one, please. <laughs> so, here we have the bottom of my housing. This is my 1DX housing. And we just wanted to talk a little bit about keeping your O-rings clean, keeping your O-rings in the right um, tension, and just taking care of them, because these things will last. They're like a rubber band, though. They're rubber. If you leave them too long, they're going to dry out. How many of you probably got your O-rings are a little too dried out now. You, you never want to have it where it's, it's dried to the touch. It's rubber. You always want to have it 
not a ton. You don't need to take the O-ring grease and put the whole thing on at one time, but you want to be having this O-ring to always have that lubrication so that it's that soft to that touch. It's just moistening up on that thing that it's not going to dry out. Um, cleaning this, you, you want to be taking this apart. Sean says every day. I, I take mine apart every week, honestly. I, I can't, like, if I'm shooting in a week, I don't have that, like, that I'm taking it apart and then remember to put it back together. But you need to let it breathe. You, if you're going on a trip for a month, you want to take off all your pistol grips, your top parts, your ports, clean everything, put that O-ring grease, and then put it back, like, in a closet, somewhere safe, dry, and out of the thing, out of harm's way. Clean it again when you come back from a trip. But if you're not using it for a couple weeks, even if you're not going on a trip, but you know you're not using it, you need to clean that and take everything apart like that. You never want to leave that pistol grip on. Leaving that pistol grip on can be the enemy if you leave it on for too long. It will disform. I, I wish I brought a picture. My friend did, and he tightened it too much. So that's what we'll get into next is kind of tightening um, your pieces. Don, anything you want to add? Just jump in, man. Um, we'll run. I'll run okay. you through the, next the, one, the loading of the housing. Okay. Um, later. So here is putting on the pistol grip. Um, and keep going, please. Thank you. So obviously, you know, you take the eyepiece off. How many of you guys put on the housing? It happens the first time you forget, and you're like, this doesn't fit this camera. You know, first thing. So take the eyepiece off with your water housing. Um, <clears throat> it's annoying, and you put it back and forth. If you use it on land, I just, I think I've lost mine, so <laughs> at this point, I just use it like that, and it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I have a bunch of Josh's. I just take Josh's, so it's fine. But you got to take that off um, for it to fit in because it fits snug against the rubber so that you can be viewing it in the back of the camera or back of the house. So these aren't on super tight. You don't need to prove your strength here to do it and tighten this so much. This should, when you take this off of your <clears throat> pistol grip, the plastic pistol grip, there should be no indention on the pistol grip from those on there. Because I just seen one and it was indented almost halfway in. The guy was like, oh no, it leaks, so I just kept tightening it and ruined this whole O-ring. So this is, a, um, you wanna go over exactly how you tighten yours? Yeah. We can, we, can do wants to we, can do we can do this right now. All right. The housing only comes with one tool. It comes with a 3 ace wrench. Need a show of hands of who has a housing here? All right, all you people. Does anybody, can everybody tell me what a quarter turn is? What's it, what's it? <laughs> he knows what a quarter turn. A quarter turn is from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Or from three to six to six to nine or nine to twelve. It's just that much. That's a quarter turn. The proper tightening of the pistol grip and the top plate is three quarter turns each nut in an X pattern, just like you do a car tire. So you start so that's up here. after you pan tighten it. Right. You, you hand tighten them down. You spin your nuts on. If your nuts do not spin right on, then take it off. Don't use the wrench to put it on because you're going to probably cross thread the thread. So it's best to just have that nut. Just spin it on all the way down until, until they're all touching, and then you do an X pattern with the, with the tightening. Do a quarter turn this nut, go down on this corner, do a quarter turn, and then you go up to this corner, and then you go to that corner. That's you one You always set. want to have that tension even, even, because if you're doing one side, you're going to be lopsiding the whole thing, ruining that O-ring on the thing, just so it's hard time. Right, that's one set of quarter turns. You're going to yeah. do that three times. So you just do it two more times, and then you're done. I'll tighten yeah. one, and then if anybody wants to check and see how tight it is, you can come after, after yeah, I think and I'll we'll, show you. Yeah, we'll You'll do that be after. very shocked at how tight it, they are. It's not a lot. That's it's the thing. People are, are just baffled. They're like, no, but like you got it. They think making it tighter, but you're not. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. it's hey, free and, but and, it, it's not that tight, and it's going to hold because it's going against there, and it's pressing against that O-ring. Yeah. That's all you need to do is press against that O-ring. You don't need to be pressing it, flattening it, and ruining it because if you press it too much, it's not going to pop back to where it is. Right? And it, on, for the bottom? Um, you definitely don't want to use nylon not lock nuts because if the lock nut gets um, 
like jammed on there, like if you don't take it off for a while, and then you try to unscrew the lock nut, it can actually back the screw back into the housing. So it could break free of the, the Loctite that's in the bottom plate, and it can actually back the screw back in. We've had people do that. And then you have to send the housing back. We'll probably have to take the, cut the nut off, remove the bottom plate, put a new... Uh, I have some extras I'll give you. I, I'll give you a 3 8 flat nut. You yeah. just have some from yeah. London. And it's, it's just... It's just really important that you that you do the same thing over and over. You follow the same routine doing it over and over. <laughs> oh, when worry, you're done with worry. the housing, I'll just you, loosen bro. everything up. You don't have to take the pistol grip off. All you have to do is loosen it up so that the O-ring, you want the O-ring to be round. Oh, the O-ring starts out round, course, you want it round, to remain yeah. round. So the longer that you keep it compressed and tight, the flatter it's going to stay. It's not yeah. going to, the memory's not yeah. going to yeah. release it. It's not going to become round. Yeah. So therefore you have to tighten it even more to get the same compression next time. Yeah. So it's really important yeah, that, that you That's why it. you're then tightening it more and more and more right. to get that back to that level. Right. But if you just do it that little bit, it's, it's baffling how little you have to do it. Like you're like, no way, like I want to tighten this more, but you're going to actually be ruining it. Yeah. You know, it, you don't need to tighten it that much. It's sealed. It's sealed on that thing. I mean, obviously no sand, hair or anything like that. That's one of the big things to make sure you got off. So. Dad, can you go to the next one, please? So it's just another view. Like, you can see that. Like, that's not pressed down completely. And we will, we will go over this after, and you guys can feel how tight everything is because sometimes you got to do it and then loosen a few and see, and we'll go over all that after. This is not too long of a presentation, and we'll do a little more hands-on and closer and everything like that. So... Um, you know, just showing like the O-ring here, um, the wire, for, this is for an A-series coming out through the middle there. Um, with the plexi blocks like this, it's sitting on that part just to go up, and you're having that wire come up. So that can't be pinched or pushed back. So next one. And then it's just going to tuck right on the side there for these ones. Same as for the splash. The splash are going to come right out the back of the middle, and it's going to tuck right on the side there, clean nice and neatly. I've had many a friends who have left this wire over their old ring, flooded their houses. That one hurts. Yeah, I think my one friend's here, Kyle. No, 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 no. But he, um, you know, so just be cautious. And sometimes you're rushing. You can't, you know what I mean? Like the waves are firing. Your guys, your friends are going in. You got to go. You got to go. Take that extra second and check. Always check your housing when you go in the water. Sometimes you can't. You're jumping in the water. See, put it on the water. Shake it around a little bit like this. Look at it, and I constantly, I haven't had a problem except for user error, but I check it all the time looking at my camera. You know what I mean? Like I'm in the water looking, checking the settings. Look, you never know when something, I've had waves hit me weird and hit a wing nut or some kind of thing like that, but that's very rare. But I'm just saying, always check that because you can usually prevent a disaster when you're in tune with all of those things. So here it shows you for your wing nuts. We're going opposites always like a car tire. This is for all tightening. Opposites, same time when you're going across. You know, so you're taking these and you're going opposites however way you want, whichever way you want to start, you go opposite. And this again is not very tight. You do not need to crank this down. You do not need to do this. You want to, is this the same three quarters as the other? Uh, well, you wouldn't be able to see a three-quarter turn. You're, you're with, going to with, see with the O-ring on these ones. Yeah. Um, for the A-series, when you're doing it, once I kind of stop putting any tension, I do a half turn like that, and that's all I do. And I'll show you guys when you guys want to come up, because it's a little, got to see it kind of more. But I'm just doing, like, once it kind of stops, I'm just doing a quarter, like a half turn like that, and that's it. And I've never had a problem. You see sand in it on that O-ring? That's your lifeline to keep the water out. Open it up right away and fix it. Hair, anything like that. It, it doesn't need to be that. It's, I don't know if you guys can see that. Like, that's not a huge amount. I could just do it very loose. So, um, just be careful of that because you want to have it even and you don't <coughs> want to have it a lot. So, can we go to the next one, please? Oh, hold on. Hold on a minute. Oh. Hold on a minute. Just, I don't want to bust Jack at all, but you see all this orange over here? <laughs> This is not acceptable. <laughs> not acceptable. All right, Zach? Thank this you. Is not acceptable. You don't want to see any lube on the O-ring. You don't ever want to see uh, any kind of gel or anything because 
it turns it turns orange for one thing, so you can really see it. So there's no oh, I didn't have that much on there because it is on there. Um, you just want the O-ring to be shiny. You just want to look like if you lick your finger and you put it on the O-ring and it looks shiny, that's what you want it to look like. Yeah. So when you get it like this, just take your Q-cup, your Q-tip, and just clean all that off. Clean it all off. Make it nice and clean. You don't want any on the edges over here or on the top. You want it to be nice and clean because what that does is all this is going to transfer to your port. And then when you put your port down to load your camera, the sand, lint, hair, if you get a hair, hair from your head that goes across the O-ring, your housing will leak. And then once you get the water in here, even if it's one drop, your housing's gonna, uh, it's gonna fog. Yeah. Especially out here in the humid weather and the warm water, your housing's gonna fog. Then you have to go back out, you have to open up the whole thing, and I do it. I've, I've done it. I've gone to Sandy's and had to do that. But as long as this is clean, then it's not on your port. And then the sand, enough sand's gonna stick to it, and less problems you're gonna have when you load your port. I've loaded my port and put four wing nuts on, and then notice sand on my O ring. I take it out, clean it off. If it, you don't have any happens. of that stuff on there, you have way less chance of having, having sand on your O ring. Yeah, don't, so that's, don't be afraid to reopen it up because you see one yeah. little piece of sand or one thing. I've swam out the pipe and didn't turn my camera on before. I've had to swim all the way, you know what I mean? Like, just <laughs> do, do all those double checks and all those things, and it happens, don't be afraid to reopen it up. Obviously, in a clean, dry environment, sometimes you're on the beach, borrow someone's towel, anything like that, try to keep it. Think, a uh, guy, Darren Crawford, told me his trick for doing his wing nuts, if he had to do that real quick and he's on the beach, throws them all in his mouth because he knows he's not going to lose them. Yeah, don't swallow that. You, yeah, you could lose it, but you don't want to put them in the sand either. So, yeah. Next one, please. Another, another, um, another little note, the little lube jar that we give you should probably last you a good eight months. So those of you who and are... And it's silicone grease. No so more, no more no left vaseline. after a couple weeks. You're using way too much, <laughs> all right? So just a little bit. And you only have to lube your O-ring like maybe once every fourth time. You use the housing fifth time. If it looks like there's none, like it doesn't look shiny anymore, then put a little on there. And it's, it's more the corners are really important because this is where it's going to crack first. It's going to be many years. It should be many, many years, five, six years before you need a new O-ring. So just keep that in mind that if you do keep it lubed, you're probably going to sell your housing before you buy a new camera. You're going to get rid of it. You're going to upgrade. So that O-ring will outlast your camera easily. easily. So it's just showing a little <laughs> bit more. That's um, how tight it is. You can see how, how tight it is. It's yeah, not, it. you know what I mean? Like, it's not compressed all the way. So next one. And we'll, we'll do that closely. So you can see just like that split level of how much it is. That's, that's tightened down. You know what I mean? You don't need to like, obviously this isn't a scale, but you don't need to have it like pressed down, compressed and pushed out. So next one, please. Another view. Another view, kind of showing the front. And then I made an illustration. I did these, guys. Don't worry. O-ring. Wait, please go back. The O-ring. See the rounded, the O-ring is round. I should have like illustrated more round. You know, so here is your housing. Next one. This is putting it on. This is all it should be. This is not a lot. This is just compressing that top part. So next one, this is too much. This is bad. So next, so don't do this one. <laughs> Go back and forth. No, too much. You know what I mean? This is, this is when you're seeing that distortion or you're seeing that warp or you're seeing it different lens. I understand if you're having to tighten it more on one side because you don't see it even, you should see it all even around. That's because maybe you didn't put the camera in correctly. I put my camera on my lap, sitting down, so that it's not pushing the controls or pushing the buttons when you're putting it in. Because like an A-series, if you had it on a table and you loaded it, you're pushing the buttons up. So maybe it's not sitting flat. So you're not getting it perfectly in how it's supposed to. These fit perfectly in the housings. You know what I mean? Like it's not gonna be like, oh, it's a little loose and it moves around. No, it's gonna be super snug, 
and fit in there. And so when you're putting it between your legs and holding it there, none of the buttons are getting pushed. You can push it exactly how it needs to be. It should sit flush. Otherwise, maybe one of its sides is up or not in correctly, and that's why you would have it uneven on the fit. So now we're going to talk about a little bit about ports. Um, these are the 7200 and the 1635, and this is with the gearing, the zoom, and it's an amazing piece. I've used others, and this is so smooth on how it works. So this is the gear zoom like this, and it's just simple. This goes around your lens, 7200, 1635, a multitude of other ones that zoom, and it just sits right there in the cradle and zooms in and out. Um, very smooth and very easy. You can do it with one hand. Um, and next one, please. And I'll just show you a couple with the 7200. So this is with the 7200 from out the back, and it brings in like that compression. Another 7200. Next. And this is 16 at 35. Shows you a different, you know, and it, I'm zooming in and out with these ones out there in the water with ease, focusing it and doing it, but it's the simplicity of having this that you can do it. I'm right handed, so I'm doing this with my left hand. So, next one, please. Um, these are flat ports. And you'll also see this is another type of zoom that you can get, and this is like a 90 degree. Yeah, this is basically a lever that's yeah. bent at a 90 degree and it basically just brushes up against your lens. Mm -hmm. You'd use that if you're not like Zach and not really into zooming fast with a wide angle lens. It's uh, a little tougher to do when you're, you're grabbing on. So this isn't like high speed you're usually wanting to do it because right. if they're coming at you and you're trying to do it, you're trying to grab onto that lens and you're moving it with the 90 degree lever. So it's a little bit more tough. But it's a great one if you have that and you don't need that, you're diving or doing other things, swimming or shooting faster or anything like that, that's an easy one to use too. And so these flat ports come in a range of different sizes and all of the housings can change to these ports very easily. Um, we can show you how if you want inside, there's a little locking system that he's created and they all pop off and this one, it just, just it's unlocked and it just comes off just like that. So you definitely don't want them to come off easy. No. Because if they come off easy, they could come off in the water. So, so all the ports that we have, they don't go on easy. They're they're a little tough to put on, but once they're on, they're not coming off. That one doesn't have I don't think has the port lock. It, it doesn't have the top. port lock, but it's the same concept of how it just twists off like that. Right. But that's once you've unlocked it from the inside. And the port lock system inside, if you're having trouble screwing it in, it's not incorrectly. So some people have had their ports just pop off and they don't just pop off. They're, you'd have to twist them and then pull it off. If it was just like this, yes, it can pop off, but through the port lock system and the thing, there's no way that it's coming off otherwise. So um, make sure it's not, it shouldn't be a struggle to lock it on the inside there. Next one, so some flat port shots. This is a 50 millimeter in the water. Next. 50. Um, well, you're going to want to use the, ele the 50 millimeter. If I use a 50 millimeter, it's a flat lens. It's not a curve like the dome for like a fisheye. So you're going to want to use a flat port for it. And can you tell us a little bit more about what? For the sharpest results, you should use a flat port for a flat lens. The dome is basically for lenses that are 180 degrees field of view, so you don't see the edges of the, of the port. You're getting itself. a weird, it's going to distort slightly. It's not going to be optimal thing, yeah, for when you're doing it. Uh, guys get away with it. They shoot their 50 inside their dome port. Right. You know what I mean? It's just not optimal and uh, the best quality of that. It also, the 50 millimeters usually sit back from the dome, which creates focusing issues. And if you try to shoot a flat lens through a, a dome, which you would lick and have a sheen of water on it, most likely your photos are going to be a little sharp. They're going to be a little soft. It's almost impossible to shoot any kind of flat lens through a dome and have them really sharp unless you shoot them dry, which means you can't lick the port. You yeah. have to make it so that the water just. Sheets off. I mean, it doesn't sheet off. It beads up and comes off. 
So it's really important that people understand that. Um, flat ports cannot be shot wet. So don't let anybody tell you, yeah, I lick my front of my, my, my flat port and I get sharp photos, because they don't. I've tried it, I've had Beelman try it. And they'll beat Zach, off. Yeah. This, this is for my 50, I just want to show you guys. Look, it's how small it is. Because that 51.2, it's touching. These are made exactly to these lenses because you don't want to have that space. You know what I mean? And if I was using this for my 50 and you had all this extra space, you know what I mean? Like you're going to have this focusing things, vignette or different things. And that's why, you know, you can get away with a lot of things, but for like image quality on that, you'll see it on something. Sorry. Um, you would have to, you would have to, you'd have to let us know that you want to fit, uh, put a filter on your 50 and we'll make sure that, that we send you a port that's yeah. long enough for that. Yeah, otherwise you'll put a ring right into your thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when it's pressed against it. My friend, one time. Thank you. Next one. So here we go to dome ports. And these are mainly for, like you said, curved glass, 180 degree views, fish eyes, and different things like that. So, um, you know, they come in a range of sizes. I wish I brought my other one. To, there's different widths and different things, but we can go off from there. Thank you. So this is a fish eye shot. Shows the curvature. Okay. Another fish eye, and it really bends out, you know, with the fish eye, as you guys know. <laughs> so, um, and so we're going to over-unders. And these, I wish we brought one of them. Did you bring yours? No. So these are just giant ports, and these are for creating the above and below illusion of a wave, water, anything that you want to shoot. Um, just a larger piece. They're, they're about this big, usually. And you're shooting above and below, and so it's just sitting right on the horizon of the water and shooting above and below. So there's this one to show you guys. And you got the below and the curves of the wave. And the, so... How the, how the, how the over-unders work is they actually push the water line away from the front of the lens. Like if you put your finger up against, your hand up against your, your face, you can only see a little above here and a little below. But the further you move it away, now you can see a lot down here and a lot above. So it actually just moves the water line away from the lens so that you can get a little bit more above and, and below in the photo. <laughs> so I think that is it for now. Yes, yeah. so anything, any of these ports that I just showed you could be for any of these, with the exception of this gearing, only goes for the A series. Um, it's just the way that they're built in the front of the splash that you can't have that. It's just not strong enough to just put the port on. But the over-unders, everything you can attach right to the things. And it's with that little system inside that you unlock and you unscrew, but any one of these can be changed and done. And so that's part of the thing, like if you scratch it, I mean, we're gonna fix a couple of these scratch ones that people have. Um, so if you do have your housing and a scratch, we'll help you try to look at it. If it's just because it looks scratch, but you don't see it in the picture, it's not affecting, leave it. Because what we're essentially doing with this cleaning and this polishing, you're taking off a little bit. And if you keep doing that, you're gonna then be getting little indentions. You're gonna start seeing it after a while. You, I wouldn't do this more than two or three times max if yeah. you really had to. And that's just because you're going to be taking away that, weakening it, and creating a dip in that thing. So only do it if you, you're seeing it in your image. Try it a couple of times, and if you do it a couple of times and you still can't get it and you have another one, probably time to get a new for it, honestly. So a new element. A new element. Yeah, you element. don't have to buy a you new could, Yeah, he can change these, the front. Yeah, these, these front elements come out. You can just pay us and we'll uh, send you a new element and you can put it in yourself. Mm -hmm.